we're trying to explain how we store how we store motion okay I like to talk about motion because when we say well store energy everybody says oh I know what he's talking about and nobody does so it's better to say store motion and that kind of jerks your ear and say what do you mean store motion yeah that's that's what we're going to talk about how you store motion so that you can deliver it or relay it later on to something else and that's essentially what a battery does and one of the uh, issues that I found as I do my research on this subject is that there's a great misunderstanding in, out there in the uh, regular world if you look at a lot of the um, uh, videos that are shown like on YouTube and so on they'll show that the you know like a cable and shows the electrons moving along the cable they're all moving in a straight line and I think this is the first myth that has to be at least clarified because people forget that that's not what really happens what happens is something else and what happens is that you know the uh, the electrons are circling in that wire they're spiraling and here let me show you first uh, uh, figure I have there you can see that according to Fleming's left hand rule an electron which is within a magnetic field will go in circles in fact that's the explanation I give for black holes I'm saying that's exactly what's happening uh, when when a star circles around nothing it's not that there's a black hole in the center it's that it's circling because it's in a magnetic field okay and all stars are charged they, they all have their own magnetic field but here you see uh, Fleming's rule and it says you know an electron circles but it doesn't circle in the same place you know along a plane what it does it moves forward as it circles so it describes a spiral like a tunnel yeah it's tunneling through but it's going around now why is this important um, <laughs> you know you would say well why would it do that you have all these atoms lined up along the that make up the cable the, the wire right so you have all these iron cobalt whatever cable you've got copper right and now this electron uh, the official version right <laughs> we have this electron and it's going out around like a, a spiraling why would it do that you know when all these atoms are more or less aligned why would it go under and over and under and over you would think they would go straight just like everybody illustrates them you know just go straight from one atom to the other why would they circle why would they go around as they and, and and once again let me give you a couple more just to make sure we we get that covered it's not that I pulled one out of nowhere and say well you know who knows here you see another picture and again all these pictures are from people who study electricity and they say look the electron spirals along the cable okay the bottom one shows you know the magnetic field coming in this case from the bottom upwards the flow of magnetic the magnetic flux is going from bottom to top in that case and you can see that there's a the electron the little red guy there and he's gonna go around a center he's gonna circle and above you see it uh, how it describes its path along you know the cable okay so it's not that I'm inventing this stuff I mean, here's one more just in case <laughs> want to make sure everybody nobody can challenge me on this this is another one uh, you can see the spiral. these are all different websites by the way and you can see that again it shows that in within a magnetic field the electron ball the official version is that it spirals we have to explain spiraling okay and uh, just in case I'm gonna put the dynamic version here and that's also based on Fleming's rule and I'm sorry I blotted my face out but there was no way of making this uh, small for you to see exactly what's, what's happening here you can see the electrons are spiraling okay and they go in in this uh, twisted manner they don't go straight they spiral around the, the wire okay so so keep that in mind when we're talking about electricity electricity spirals within a, a cable it doesn't go straight okay and that's that's gonna be important as, as we're gonna see it spirals and just in case we've got another one here and this is in a beam line this is um, in the cyclotron 
And again, you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I tried to do my best to highlight it. Here you have one electron. This is their official version. And you can see that it's spiraling along this uh, twisted cable there, which is really its path. And its path is made of all these atoms. So the electron is just, is just spiraling around them. Okay. So essentially what you're saying is, if I get this right, every time I turn on the light or any time I have an appliance that's using electricity, uh -huh. you have all these beads spir spiraling around the wires. Yeah, and uh, this is important because, you know, we have to, I mean, if it goes straight, everybody says, okay, there's almost nothing to explain. It just jumps from one atom to the next, went down the road. But when it starts spiraling, you start asking, well, why is it spiraling? Is it that the atom is spiraling also? Is it turning around itself? Is it uh, spinning? Is that why? You know, we have to answer this question. Okay, so let me get this guy out of there. Come back into square one here. And, um, and here's, here's how they illustrate. Okay, this is, I've done this little drawing, but it's based on what you'll see throughout the internet. And what you'll see is that this is a battery, okay? And on the right side, you have a lead plate. And on the uh, left-hand side, you have uh, lead dioxide, okay? PBO2 there. So they're both lead? They're both lead, but one is an oxide. One is made out of the oxide of lead. In fact, you see the colors are different. Those are essentially the colors uh, that, you know, that these elements have in real life. Lead, lead dioxide is brownish, red, reddish brown, and lead is bluish white uh, to uh, gray. Okay, so they have two different colors. One is just an oxidation of the other. In between, in this, uh, we have a soup in there. We have a liquid, and that's going to be uh, sulfuric acid, and we're going to uh, put it in with water. Okay, and, um, and so we have these two plates in this uh, bath. And you can see that according to the official version, what we have is that the electrons, those red little uh, dots that you see moving there, they're moving essentially in a straight line. And, and this is a little misleading. And this is probably the correct version, at least uh, if we follow Fleming's rule. And that's that they, I've tried to do this as best as possible, maybe you don't see it well, but if you check there, you'll see that they're kind of spiraling around the wire, okay? That connects uh, the positive to the negative end. So the, the electrons are really spiraling around. They're, they're going uh, like a torsion along that, that whole tunnel, okay? So even if we're talking about electrons, and here we're talking about the uh, particles like the official version is, we have to think of them as going in circles as they move forward. And if you look at that, that's a description of a spiral. Okay. So uh, what do we have? Well, we have here an explanation of how some of this is done. Here is the, oh, let, let me bring that first one back. I got to say something here first. How is this uh, explained? So th this is explained, in other words, the functioning of a battery. The battery is explained in such a way that the sulfuric uh, that's in there, um, it's, it's going to react with the lead on the right-hand side, okay? It's going to react with the lead, and it's going to give us um, two extra uh, electrons, okay? So somehow, somewhere, for some reason that we still don't know, the sulfuric reacts with the lead, and because of this, the lead, which is very porous to allow the sulfuric to penetrate every little nook and cranny in there, uh, ends up with two electrons, extra electrons, okay? And uh, as long as you don't put a connection there, it's gonna stay there. It's gonna store those two electrons. On the other side, on the brown side, where you see the uh, lead dioxide, the same chemical, the same bath, is going to re, uh, react with that lead dioxide and it's going to allow it to have four positive um, charges. In other words, uh, it's gonna, the, the lead on that side is going to lose four electrons. So this guy over here, the one on the right, is going to gain two electrons. The one on the left is going to lose four electrons. That is how you create the negative pole 
and the positive pole. It's a chemical reaction uh, discovered by Mr. Volta in the 17th century. And uh, essentially what, um, what they discovered is that this is a chemical reaction that stores motion, stores energy, ready to release it as soon as you put that green connection uh, from one pole to the other. Okay, that's, that's in general terms what we're going to be doing here, what we, what we have to explain. We're saying here we have, one more time, uh, we have the lead on the right hand side and the lead dioxide on the left hand side. We put these plates in a bath, that same bath reacts differently with the lead than it does with the lead dioxide. In one case, it, it stores or creates, generates, and then stores the negative charges, which is on the right-hand side there, and on the other side, it's going to uh, store positive charges. In other words, what it means really when we say it stores positive charges, what we're saying is that it's going to uh, uh, need electrons because it's got holes. It's, it's ionized positively. So we're essentially when we say it's storing negatives or storing positives, we're really just saying we're giving uh, potential, essentially. Yeah. Talking about potential. What, like, this thing <coughs> now has the property that if X, Y, and Z happens to it, it will react thusly. Yeah, uh, essentially, um, this is more a description, yeah. not an explanation of why or how it does it. Right now, we're, we're just doing a, a description. We're saying, you know, for some reason, uh, the left-hand side reacts differently than the right-hand side. And the left-hand side, we'll call that positive because we like the plus sign. And we'll say, look, on this side, it's going to store positive charges. Which, and what we mean by that is that it's going to want electrons, electron balls, which for some reason are negative. And the other guy picks up two electrons you know, and uh, he wants to release them. He's got too many electrons. And so as long as we remove that green connector between them, uh, nothing happens. They just keep that uh, charge in them because it's a chemical reaction with the uh, yellow uh, uh, soup there. Once you put the uh, cable to connect one, the negative to the positive pole, now uh, the electrons start flowing, the electron balls come out of the lead uh, plate and try to get into the, lead, into the lead dioxide plate. And of course, if you put you know, a light or anything that you put in between there, uh, it's gonna, you know, the electrons are going to go through that uh, system that you put into that device or whatever, and uh, it's going to light it up or make it work or whatever. It's going to cause work. And uh, so this is essentially what we have to explain, okay? And what we're going to try to do is to explain it with the uh, rope hypothesis. And I'm not going to do that today, by the way. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow because I need for people to think a little bit about these things. And um, uh, it's homework. Yeah, it's uh, homework, uh, at least for the time being.